one is that there are some carnivores that still still struggle with loose stools. Um, six months into the diet, they've tried the ox bile, they've tried you know other digestive enzymes, and it, it becomes perplexing of why are you still having loose stools? You should have been assimilated to the excess fat, and maybe it's some of this um, the bile malabsorption. Um, the way to know, and and we do this all the time with people with cystic fibrosis. Uh, and in certain short gut patients, there is a very simple study you can order and it's called fecal fat analysis. Mm. And basically it sounds disgusting, but you poop into a jar for, for 24 hours and they can actually measure the amount of fat you have in your stool. And until your fecal fat is positive, you're just making assumptions that your gut isn't working properly. Does, does that make sense? Yes. And, yeah. and um, Fat malabsorption is extremely rare in most people. There are degrees to it. I don't know if you remember the weight loss medication called Orlistat or Ally. It was a fat blocking, uh, um, basically when people thought that that we became fat because we ate fat, it blocked fat absorption. And the warning on the label, the side effect was uh, beware of fecal seepage because it basically blocked the absorption of fat. You pooped all the fat out and you basically lived in diarrhea land. So okay. the first thing, if you're really worried about this uh, uh, six, to eight hour, uh, six to eight months out, get a fecal fat study. That's the first thing. The second thing is it may not be an absorption problem. It may be an enzymatic breakdown product. Remember, carnivores are pretty much 100% dependent on enzymes to break our food down. That's why humans have the longest small intestine of any mammal. Okay, because we are enzymatically programmed. We are not fermenters or digesters of our food. When we talk about digestion, it's enzymatic digestion, not bacterial digestion. So um, under those conditions, you may have issues with your pancreas where you're not producing the lipases, the, the enzymes that break the fat down adequately or break the protein down adequately. And of course, if you're eating tons of fat, no matter how much, uh, how normal your system is, you may be overwhelming that system. So those may be causes. Uh, the other thing is anybody that's had surgery or has inflammatory dysfunction of their small intestine in particular. And you mentioned the Crohn's, uh, 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 ulcerative colitis is exclusively a disease of the colon. Crohn's disease can affect your gut from the mouth to the butt. And it's an inflammatory condition of the intestine, but there is, there may be bacterial overgrowth, there may be uh, candidiasis, there may be biome issues as well. But the Crohn's is the classic autoimmune disease based on uh, an abnormal human biome. And in fact, uh, so if you've got short gut from Crohn's or you've got a processing issue, either not enough enzyme or too short a gut or not enough bile, of course, as soon as the fat gets into your colon, it's coming out the bottom end. So with those Crohn's patients, in fact, in my practice, where I see a number of Crohn's patients, we actually manage them on purpose with a higher protein pure carnivore diet. And there's a group in Australia, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's the same, same group that described H. pylori for acid. You can Google this, um, who've done a number of experiments, uh, sterilizing their Crohn patients gut with antibiotics, and then putting them on a pure carnivore diet and basically getting Crohn's to go into remission. So the inflammatory bowel diseases um, are bacterial and autoimmune related in large part, at least that's our understanding. And the carnivore diet over time changes that biome to be more uh, um, uh, carnivore-based or animal product-based rather than vegetable-based because the bacteria that ferment food are different than the bacteria that esterify fat. Remember one other thing. Once in the in humans, once food gets into the colon, it's game over. The colon can only do two things. The colon absorbs and secretes water, salt and water. Those are the only two things that cross the colon. So once you, your food has left the small intestine, it gets into the colon. It's liquid on the right side, the beginning. Um, if it's fat, that fat gets esterified. It gets broken down. If it's vegetables, it gets fermented in the colon. And that's what makes our poop. So if you've got a short colon, or if it goes through the colon very quickly, you may have diarrhea. But that's not necessarily a bile problem. Okay. It may be a, an intestinal a rate of movement through the intestine, and that can also be studied. But let's figure out what the devil is going on by specifically analyzing uh, rate of movement, 
uh, pancreatic enzymes, uh, bile conditions, and also seeing if it truly is fecal fat or something else that's causing the problem. Uh, you know, the best thing is just to look at global fecal fat. And then, uh, so you want to treat the problem. You don't want to knee jerk to somebody on the internet that's going to tell you that this ox bile is really good for you. If right. you've got an enzymatic problem, there are pancreatic enzymes similar to what we use for ulcerative colitis, for, for uh, um, uh, cystic fibrosis patients, because their pancreas doesn't work properly. Um, if it is a bile issue, there's things we can do with that. Uh, there are ways we can change. 